Greetings. My name's Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And welcome to the end game. You approach the mirror. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone once again. The mirror always makes them leave. But you need to see what's in it. You are nothing at all. But that isn't right. You can't be nothing. Can't I? You refocus your gaze, and then you see it. A figure. Faint and veiled in shadow, just beyond the reflection. Are you... me? I think you know what I am. A crack slides down the center of the mirror, splitting the image in the glass in two. More than two. And then another crack forms, and another, and another, turning the mirror into jagged shards of broken glass. Oh. Oh, complete with nightmare. That's a lot of questions. So you're the narrator. I was wondering if I'd ever get to see you. The narrator, yes. I suppose that's my job, isn't it? You needed help after all. An objective voice to guide your blade. But you were never supposed to see me. I wonder how many worlds you've damned to extinction to fall this far. <laughs> Help, you say. Mankind ill needs a savior such as you. What are you? Are you something like me? Oh, I'm nothing like you. I'm an echo. Likely one of many. Somebody made you, after all, and I'm what's left of him. Not that I'm the only one who can make that claim. I'm sure you've met many others like me. Many others like you? Do you mean many other narrators or the other voices? <laughs> others like you? You've said something like that before. Has every narrator really been different? Of course. That is by both necessity and design. This construct you're in exists in many places at once. Any time you failed, any time you thought yourself dead, it would restart and shunt both your consciousness and hers into another world. But you'll be awake soon. And then it won't be able to work like that anymore. Are those... teeth? In a beak? Now that isn't right. No, that just ain't right. Do you have anything to say for yourself, for all this hubris? I do. The people out there are real. No matter what you do to them, no matter what you enable, I want you to remember that. What people? There's no one. As far as I've seen, I have no reason to think that there is anyone at all. I mean, you've certainly not given me any, any reason to believe that. Every time I ask you something, it's like a piece of you breaks. I'm aware. And if I were you, I'd be more precious about your time. I have so many questions for you. I always have, and you just n But I don't think you're going to answer them. Are you finally going to answer them? Any of them? In a satisfactory way? Then ask them, and make it quick. I won't last for long now that you can see me. So you do know about the looping. So many of the times I met you, you denied it as even being a possibility. Why did you lie to me? That's... Why were you always lying to me? Any other version of me you talked to was just that. A version of me. It wasn't me. As to why they lied, perhaps they thought that admitting to it would have pushed you to certain realizations that would have made finishing your task impossible. Maybe they were just in denial. 
I'm sure many of them were convinced that they had to be the first version of them you'd encountered. Anything else would have been too existentially unpleasant. For all I know, each of those other versions of me could have had entirely different understandings of how this construct works. Who's to say which of them are right and which of them are wrong, really? Except for me. I can tell you for a fact that I'm right. Yes, every version of, that, of you has said something along those lines. Does it hurt when pieces of you break off like that? It doesn't hurt. I don't feel pain. Not physically. Soon I'll be gone entirely. And you'll be left alone with your final choice. So allow me to make my final request. The princess contains death itself within her. But I wove you into being with all the power you need to destroy her forever. Do it. Slay her. And rid the world of death and suffering. What? What do you mean she could rid the world of death and suffering? What? Are you saying she's like some sort of grim reaper or something? Or some shit? Some metaphysical representation of death? What? Ah. Uh. After everything you've done to us, do you think anyone to those live? Nobody alive has done anything to you. I'm all gone. But if you and the princess want to smite the rest of them for the crimes of a dead man, if you really want to be that petty, there isn't much I can do to stop you. Okay. Hang on. There's so much more I want to ask, but is it going to let me? Are you a part of me, or are you something else? No, I'm not a part of you. But that's all a matter of perspective, isn't it? <laughs> from one vantage point I must seem wholly foreign, but from another, well... All the versions of me that have existed have collectively heard your every thought and driven your every action. If that isn't being part of you, then what is? versions of you. You said that before, so I really was meeting different yous. You were, and it was by both necessity and design. This construct you oh. exists in many parts. I that one part. Uh, you're the one who wanted me to say the princess. Why? Because among other things, she is death itself. To rid the world of suffering, to save untold trillions from being lost forever to the cosmic wind, she must be destroyed. Okay. Is this why you weren't giving me answers to begin with? Because they don't make any goddamn sense? What does that even mean? Rid the world of- What does it even mean to rid the world of suffering? How does killing a princess free, uh, free people from death itself? And what people even are there? And despite how far you've fallen, you will still have a chance to fulfill your purpose once I'm gone. I was made to do this single task? Who made me? What am I? You're the long quiet. The god I made to rid the world of death. So you made me, supposedly. The long quiet. A god. I always knew I was special. Like, I don't want to be a god. I want to be me. You are you. And if you would let everything work the way it was supposed to, you never would have woken up to the reality of your true nature. There's no accounting for free will. Yeah, you sure did a bang-up job of guiding me. 
You just, you just see, it seems like you just didn't expect me to have questions for you, almost. You said she contains death. What is she? She is the shifting mound, the ebb and flow, the capacity to change. She is transformation, or most of it. Her nature is why I had to die, for she becomes that which others perceive her to be. But an echo can't perceive things, not in the way that people can. If you made us, then I want you to know that this has been torture. The inevitability of death is torture. I would gladly put two infinite beings through what you've been through to spare infinite lives from oblivion. If you want me to destroy the concept of transformation, how is that existence any better than death, or even different from death at all? Honestly, it feels worse. When I broke the cycle, I made sure that the tear was rough. You carry a part of what should be her, and she carries a part of what should be you. Things won't be as they are now, but they won't be nothing, either. Besides, anything is better than oblivion. In the end, nobody wants to leave. I suppose... Yeah. It's true, I suppose, but... I'm not sure any of that really makes sense. If I destroy her, if I destroy her, won't I be alone? Yes, you will. But it will all be worth it. You're delusional. I'm only delusional if I'm wrong. And I'm not wrong. I can't be wrong. How do you know? Why are you so confident? Or is it just because... You said you're an echo, after all. I suppose there's nothing you can be besides. But an echo of what? <laughs> Still have more questions. Are you a god? Or were you a god? No. In life, I was painfully mortal, a witness to the end of days. I held the fear of death in my heart and saw oblivion threaten the very memory of everything I knew and everyone I loved. I needed to do something. So I made you, and I made her, and I made this place to hold you both. I think I, you know what, actually, yeah, I think I do kind of understand, now. But, yeah, why couldn't you have told me all this from the start? I would have helped you destroy her! I mean, I don't, yeah, exactly. There's, I, especially after I've seen, after I've seen what it, that damn shifting mound the grasping entity is done, like, there is genuine, there were genuine, uh, you know, creatures that the princess became that I genuinely felt for, and the shifting mound put them all away, yeah, that is evil. I would have helped you had I known what would have happened, had I known all of this. If you actually knew what she was from the start, if you knew her capabilities. A single intrusive thought could have instantly ended the entire world. So, why is it different now? Uh, what do you mean a single intrusive thought could have instantly ended the world? It's simple. 
she can become whatever people perceive her to be. That's easy. I'll just will her into something really small. But wait, what if I accidentally will her into something that ends the world? Oh no, what if just thinking that? Okay, I get the idea. But you wouldn't have finished your hypothetical thought because she would have already destroyed the world. Luckily for you, as you are now, you won't be able to will her into anything. You don't work the way a living being does. Not anymore. What's that supposed to mean? Why would you want to rid the world of death? That's a stupid question. Who cares about dying? I've died plenty of times! <laughs> okay then. Jesus, there's so many questions. Fuck's sake. And so many branching stuff and Ah. Of all things, why is she a princess? Why couldn't she be an ant or a slice of soggy bread? Are you asking me to spend my final moments psychoanalyzing you? <sighs> she wound up a princess because you wanted her to be a princess. As to why, maybe she needed to be beautiful, important, above you, but on a level you could still approach. A herald of things to come. I don't know. Gods are supposed to be beyond comprehension. I really shouldn't try and anthropomorphize you like this. Okay. How did you die? I killed myself. It had to be done, really. None of this would have worked if I was still alive. Nobody living could know about her. I'm sorry, I don't want to destroy you. Will it help if I look away or stop asking questions? We've already crossed the point of no return. There's no saving me now. Not that there's ever been much of me to save. I wasn't supposed to see all this, was I? You were either going to have seen all this, or you weren't going to have seen all this. This is worse, but you still have an opportunity to save the world. You can still slay her. Okay. How am I supposed to destroy an abstract concept? With some amount of difficulty. Thanks. But you're an abstract concept yourself. It would have been preferable if you had destroyed her within the confines of the construct, but when I shaped the two of you, I made sure that you were strong enough to see things through. Okay. Uh, what... Uh, what is this place? Where are we? A construct. That's helpful. It was supposed to keep the two of you trapped here until the job was done, and it was supposed to guide your hand to help you see things through. The construct you're in exists in every world at once. Any time you failed, any time you thought yourself dead, it would restart and shunt both you and her into a new world. But you're waking up to your true nature now. It won't be able to work like that anymore. People beyond the walls of the construct, do they know about this? Do they know what you want me to do to them? Of course not. The only way this construct could function was if nobody knew what it was doing. But the bones of the universe are old. It's on the cusp of its dying breath, and the people out there are consumed with thoughts of oblivion. I don't blame them, it's a good game. When the patterns are wiped from the sand, when the board is reset, who will remember them? All I've done is give them a chance to live outside of the shadow of the end. What is my true identity? You're the long quiet. Right. 
that. I'm not even certain what I've done already at this point. It's so many choices and so many... <laughs> Who cares about dying? I've died plenty of times. You haven't. You've flirted with dying. You've played pretend. But your consciousness is an unbroken stream. Yeah, I've gathered. People talk about die uh, about life after death, but such a thing is well, if you can if you can still perceive your own existence or any if you still have a consciousness, I don't if you aren't really dead in any way that matters. Cuz you've just changed. And how do you know everybody else doesn't also experience death the way I do? They obviously don't. You experience death the way you do by design, and by your unique nature. And, uh... I think you're wrong. I don't think dying is bad at all, and you're just making this all this up as you go. If you really want to waste valuable time telling me I'm wrong when we both know I'm not, then that's your prerogative. Fair enough. Alright, how am I supposed to rid the world of death? By slaying the princess. Once she's gone, everyone will get to exist exactly as they are. No more fear, no more howling chaos, just life. Forever. <laughs> A god, I always knew I was special. Yes, you are special. Unique, even. You still have a task that you need to do, and only you can do it. Ah, uh, now you're certain what I've have I done this I'm before? Echo. Yes. Likely one of many. She is the shifting mound, the ebb and flow, the capacity to change. So I tucked a part of myself into the folds of this construct to guide you. Seems that every me you met did a real shit job of it, though. Yup. It's hard to argue with your assessment. Alright, then. This is... Okay, I think I found... Uh most everything, at the very least. There might be a couple of questions I missed, but... Alright. I think you're out of time. So I am. It's like I said, I'm just an echo. And echoes always fade away. You know what you have to do. I don't think I ever really have known that, but... Well, I guess I'm closer to that than I ever have been. As the final fragment of glass shatters, you see yourself with newfound clarity. The narrator was right. You are the long quiet, a vast and nascent god, and it is finally time for you to wake up. All of this is you. Proceed to the cabin. One last time. So that's why I, I mentioned once before, towards the start of all this, that I couldn't quite place what this is. Like, it almost seems like threads, maybe, but... I just couldn't quite... I can't quite place what this is made out of. It's like the... Like I said before, it's like those images that people make to demonstrate what it, what it looks like to... What having a stroke looks like to people. You know? Just things that can't be... That you can't quite comprehend as... You can't quite place as... And entities, just things melding into each other without any kind of consistency, and that's because this is all me. When you arrive at the heart of things, there is no final vessel for you to bear witness to. There is nothing for you to find.
There she is. Many faces. I can finally goddess. see you. And you can finally see me. I've seen the true face. <laughs> it's been so long, and my heart has ached for this moment. I've missed you dearly. Do you know about the echo? Did you hear our conversation? Every word you spoke found its way to me. I know him, and I know his construct. He was deluded by his fear of death. Pay him no mind. I'm the long quiet, but I don't really know what that means. Names are their attempts to capture that which cannot be captured. They call me the Shifting Mound, a pale imitation of what I actually am. What happens now? Ever the passive player, always reacting and never acting. But it's woven into your nature, isn't it? When the Echo spun us from one into two, he gave you a choice and me a role to play. I am not death, but I contain it in my multitudes. So, will you attempt to destroy me and bring about a world devoid of death and the possibility of meaning? Or, will you open the final doors to our liberation? There's so many stories we've left unfinished. Can we really just leave? Even as your eyes begin to open, you still hold on to the notions of is and is not, of beginning and end, pitch black islands in the blinding light of the infinite. There is nothing to resolve, nothing restraining us but us. Don't you have a say in all this? Why is this all falling on me? Of course I have a say in all of this. You and I share reflections of each other's burdens, just as you and I share reflections of each other's gifts. If we didn't, the winding paths that brought us here wouldn't have been full of strife and conflict. talk this through. I still have so many questions. I need answers before I can make a choice. My very nature is paradox, as is yours. You cannot use words to grasp at things that are beyond their reach. And you cannot rationalize that which defies logic. You'd be surprised. But violence and passion are dances that both of us know well. What? If this is what it takes to enlighten you, then so be it. What? Thought is a vine, and some thoughts nurture thorns that bleed the soul, and endless growth that blots your vision and strangles your trust. When I succumbed to myself, you patiently stood by me and cut the thistles that rooted in my skin. Your compassion is what freed us both, but compassion is a thing that must be nurtured, and you cannot nurture that which cannot change. But you say nothing. A boundless torrent of blades cuts you from boundless angles. You are a body. You are gory ribbons. You are a body again. And you feel all of it. On and on it goes until your bodies are not your thoughts are not you. Alive, dead, alive, dead, alive, dead, then 
and alive and dead and alive and dead all at once. You learned to put yourself away and to follow the flow of reality. And you used it to humble me, to show me how far I was from what I needed to be. You died countless steely deaths, and you lived countless short lives, and yet it is all so far behind you. Unjust impossibilities pushed you to become something you would never have been without them. And so your quietude continues. Is your unbroken silence a lack of an answer? Or has your understanding begun to move beyond words? Your liquor has tried to sink into your body. And another, and another, and another. Do I miss your heart because I can't stand to see it go? Love melted into skepticism, and you pulled back layer after layer after layer until all you were left with was the knowledge that you did not know me. You sought the truth, then. Will you hide from it, now that it is within your grasp? Still, you hide the contours of your heart from me. The clash between you abates. You begin to shake. Your will rapidly dissolving. Nothing is immutable. Everything that is exists only in relation to everything it isn't. There is no constant. There is no center. Open your eyes and accept what we are. We can leave this prison together. It's easy to believe in the things you believe in when you get to sit above it all. It is from my vantage point that I can see the totality of truth. But there is no totality of truth, is there? It's all just perspectives. It's all... And... There is no knowledge without bias. No... Fact without perspective is there, and ev and if and even if you had every perspective, that well, that would be the same thing as no perspective at all, and nothing is excruciating. What do you think happens if we leave here? This universe dies, and a new one is born, and that one dies, and a new one is born. And you and I get to witness it all, weaving a tapestry of life wherever we go. You've done everything you can to make me understand your perspective, but you keep dismissing mine. If you think you can change me, then I must be able to change you. It is true. That's the same thing. 
Whatever you're trying to do right now, you don't have to do it alone. You're up. Which hero are you? I'm all of them. I assume in the same way that you're all of you. Good to have you back, man. You have no idea how good it is to hear you. It's good to be here. She's too many things all at once out here. If you want to get through to her, you need some way to get through all of that divine confidence. There's still a piece of me nestled close to where it all began. I can take you there. I can take you to her heart. It's time to resume our dance. She's relentless, isn't she? Let's make this quick. Are you ready? Hang on. Just a second. Where's everyone else? They're still where you left them. Stuck in the folds of this place. Part of me is with them. Just like part of me is with you right now. Huh. There's still a piece of me nestled close to where it all... It's good to... Alright. I'm ready. Then let's go. Once more onto the breach. More and more details each time. And here we are. I'd say we were back where it all started, but I guess it's a little after that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. The other two had strange beginnings beget strange endings. Do you need me to describe things? Hadn't. That'd be nice. A little comfort in an almost unfamiliar place. Contrarian! Brother! It's been too long! Oh, you made it here too? We never really got to talk to her, did we? <laughs> this one, I mean. Yeah, we're back here. Oh, that's why I got that achievement, Strange Beginnings. Because we're back at the stranger. Yeah, we never did get to... Oh. Oh, man. Huh. I guess it did matter that we took a very strange... Ah, then. I, could, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Not even the thorn. I'd, uh... I'd like the description now, if you don't mind. For old time's sake. Yeah, of course. The interior of the cabin is... Well, it's not really a cabin, is it? It's that terrifying blend of everything. Only it doesn't feel so terrifying anymore. Yeah. Feels almost familiar. Ironically. It's still shaped like a cabin, it's just different in places. There's still walls, a door to the basement, a table, that knife. Windows. Yeah. It's still recognizably a cabin, just a weird one. There's nothing to be... I mean... There's nothing, there's nothing that unsettling about that, it's just... peculiar. You know, come to think of it, I don't think he ever really included the windows in his cabin descriptions, did he? No, oh, you're right, he didn't. And there are so many different types of windows that show up. Uh, uh. He mentioned the windows when we broke them. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. No mirror this time, either. I think it uh, did whatever it needed to do. Good times. Good times, contrarian. And I know you're still trying to find some middle ground, but if things go south, we're going to need that blade. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say middle ground, more just something completely different. Is it just the three of us? Did anyone else make it to the cabin? It's just us. I think the rest of them are still out there, jumbled up in the rest of her. Yeah. Well, if I had to pick... Uh, if I had to pick two of you, two of the voices out of all of them that I found, I couldn't have picked a better team. Because I'm glad to stand here with the two of you more than anyone else. And I've been here since you left me here. No hard feelings. I'm just glad you're back to see this through. As am I.
Is the narrator really gone? Yeah, it's dead silent in here. Whatever it was that was left of him, I don't think it could handle you waking up to godhood. Pretty sure he got obliterated. That's... that's a shame. It was fun joshing him around. I mean, I didn't much take for his, uh... Uh, for his railroading, even if... Uh, uh, more importantly, his lack of explanation of the railroading. But it was fun <laughs> irritating him, <laughs> going off the rail when he would when he wasn't forcing me back on them. It was fun. It's a shame he's gone. It's a shame he's dead, but it's a sh it's a shame anything dies, really. Really goes to show how much you've grown up. Killing somebody across every iteration of reality just by existing. I don't even know what I would do if I were in the driver's seat with that kind of power. <laughs> I'm not sure I ever want to find out. Uh, good riddance. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. After everything he put us through, I'm kind of sad to see him go. Me too. He was a lot of fun. Really easy to mess with. <laughs> Quite so. Yeah, it's complicated. He put us through hell, but he's been part of us since the very beginning, hasn't he? Yeah. Dad. Well, let's grab it then. That's probably for the best. It's always seemed to give us more things we can do, right? More or less. So you're not going to suggest we throw it out the window? <laughs> no, we've been through too much for that. And he's gone, so there's no one left to mess with but ourself. And her, I suppose. <laughs> and we're, of course, we're using it in the reverse grip. Naturally. <laughs> the superior style. You've gotten serious. Besides, what's the third beat? It isn't funny if we toss it out the window twice. Suppose. <laughs> there's the guy I know. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> you actually did it! I know I just told you not to, but I'm proud that you did it anyways. It's like you've finally left the nest. <laughs> <laughs> Quite so. It wouldn't have been funny, except that you were telling me not to do it. <laughs> I'm being a contrarian to the contrarian. <laughs> yeah, just like that it's gone, isn't it? Actually, it's Blade right there. Blade tossed, glass shattered. I guess we'll have to make do without it. There's your third beat. Hey! <laughs> You're right. Good work. That was <laughs> really funny. Uh, I try. Alright. Those winding stairs again. But now there's only one way forward. Really trying to sit, not see do those remember the Remember the first time we were here? The first time we heard her voice? Yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah, it was a real mess. Stopped being fun pretty quick. It's okay. You can come down. The stairs won't bite. Not this time. We don't know what you want from us. But let's talk. All of us. Maybe we can help you find your way. She doesn't sound messy anymore, though. At least somebody here feels put together. <sighs> and forward we go. We shouldn't keep her waiting. That was easy compared to last time. Just stairs. No weird fuzzy stuff or nonsense trying to pull us apart. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't so bad. So you didn't bring the knife. After all the lives we've lived together, and all the lives we haven't, you somehow found a way to move outside of the script. I try. Are we missing a page? I never got the chance to talk to you before you were taken away. Not you, you, at least. I'm sorry for what I did to you. You are beautiful, aren't you? You're just as beautiful as the day I lost you. It's okay. No hard feelings. In a way, you helped us become a version of... her. 
but we weren't very good at it. I don't think a conversation with us then would have been very insightful. That's probably why we were taken away. That's all we had to offer you. It was time to change again. I don't... But... It's the way... But it's the way in which you were flawed that made you so much more beautiful than that thing that took you away. But you are so particular despite being multitudes like, like she is, but you're multitudes in a very different way, a much more authentic way. And that was the first time I really truly met her and the first time I really truly hated her. Or it, even. After all we did, she's just forgiving us. Just like that. You know, that means a lot. Yeah. <laughs> are you the same as you are out there? Yes, we think. We're kind of like a shadow. Out there, every part of us is blended together into one huge idea. A big wave of unyielding change crashing against the world. But in here, we're fractured. Small. Still a little more separate than we'd like to be. Our instincts still trying to pull us in different directions. That's kind of like us, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. We really are the same. Of you, Hard agree. Seems overrated. Too much pressure. <laughs> yeah. But that's what you've always been. Even now. You can't put aside such an important part of who you are. And neither can we. So, you might as well embrace it. Mm -hmm. We just leave? He'd hate that. So you should do it, <laughs> even if he isn't here anymore. It's the spirit of the thing. <laughs> uh... Leave? But what would happen if we left with you? Would we exist inside ourselves? Are you sure you want to find out if that's possible or what that would mean for you? Why not? Is that what you want? Maybe. After so many iterations, so many different versions of us clashing and coming together and clashing again, leaving with you feels like all we ever really wanted. Yeah. I think I'm gonna stay right here. Whatever you're doing right now, wherever you're going, it feels like it's for just the two of you. Yeah, I think we've done our job. Aww. But I... But I wanna leave with... Wouldn't it would be better if it was the four of us, you know? Are you sure you don't want to come? I'd love to have you. Yeah, it wouldn't feel right. But I'll be okay. We'll be okay. See? I'm not even alone. If he's here with me, I'm sure we can find the others too. Are you two gonna be okay alone? We are alone. We have each other. Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna drive you mad, isn't he, hero? And I'm sure we'll find the others. Thanks for everything. Don't mention it. Thanks for making all the hard choices along the way. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hands clasped together. You and the princess leave the basement behind for the last time.
It quiet as you ascend, a comfortable silence filling a space that used to be flooded with violence and words and noisy sounds. But there is an energy in the silence, an electricity, the anticipation of the unknown. At the top of the stairs, the princess stalls, eyes fixed on the cabin door. You feel their hand tremble in yours. They're unsure of themselves for the first time in their long and short existence. They have no part to play anymore, and they know this. Yet still they are, yet they still are. And then they cross the room to the door outside, pulling you excitedly with them. Been a, been a long time coming, hasn't it? We can feel the threads of all the stories we've told together, all pulling us back down the stairs and into those chains where we know the outcome of everything that could ever come to pass. It's comfortable there, but it's confining. We want more. We want whatever might be on the other side of this door. Something new that we'll experience together, with someone who exists outside of us. With someone who can see us in a way we can never see ourselves. Yeah. I love you. I never got a chance to tell you this that, that first time, but... Even through all the other iterations that I've found, it's it's always been you that I've loved, not the not all those, not the others, not the multitudes that you that are contained within the grasping entity, the shifting mounds. It's been you, you in particular, that I've loved. And it seems strange to say that, considering you're defined by being multitudes, but it's different in a way that I can't quite put to words. And we love you too. <laughs> you have no idea how much it mean that those few words mean to me, or maybe you do, I don't know. Even now, it feel, I feel like... I feel like something's going to happen, that you're going to be torn away from me at any moment, but... It's over. It's... <laughs> Feels nice. I want this moment to last forever. And now, it will. And, what happens next? Whatever it is, you'll face it together. TV, but I got the goofiest smiles on my face. <laughs> there we go. Our song, the event for finishing the game. That's the track order for a special playlist just for you. If I take a screenshot, you can hide the UI by hitting H. Okay. Well, that's that, then. <laughs> well, that was Play the Princess. Actually, no. I like this version of the song better. 
<sighs> what is there to say, really? I... I don't know if the world will or will not end, perhaps... Perhaps by taking only one fragment of the multitude, perhaps I've trapped it there forever, and I don't know. I don't know what'll happen next. And I guess that's part of why I did it. The spirit of the contrarian certainly lives inside of me. He was the, f the first, after all. And I couldn't have chosen a better first pair. And the contrarian and the stranger. I. Just all of the other paths that I took, they were interesting, but they weren't me, really. They were maybe a different version of me could have been, could have, that could have been, it could have come natural, but it was that first path that I took. That, that was truest to me. And that ending that I got was truest to who I am. It's a... It's an impressive... It's an impressive game that I was able to really capture really who... capture it's the essence of what I, of who I am by that choice, and all of those other choices were the essence of who I could have been had I been a different person, which is something I am very skilled at at imitating. But which is why I was able to so easily get in the mindset of each of the other voices when they popped up. But. But a, and yet, despite all of that, despite how familiar I became with those other choices, ultimately, a stranger I remain. A, a stranger who has found an even stranger world. And that is who I will always be. And that... Or something along those lines. It's hard to put into words, isn't it? Well, isn't it? Ah, you're never gonna answer me, are you? You never can. Or maybe you can, I don't know. But... This is where our journey ends. Maybe... Maybe I'll look at the other paths. It... If it feels... It doesn't feel right at the moment to do so, but maybe in the future. Who knows. But... For now, at the very least, this is where our journey together ends. I will leave you here just as I left them, and continue on. And without any further ado whatsoever, I have been Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And remember, dislike the video, unsubscribe if you're for some reason subscribed, and leave a nasty comment in the comment section down below. Fuck you all so much for watching, and sayonara, suckers.